Today in our 2011 GMC Acadia, we will be testing the Kurt Folding Aluminum Cargo Carrier. That's part number C18100. Its dimensions are 19 by 60. It has a max capacity of 500 pounds and it's for two inch hitches only. So we can go ahead and begin by inserting our shank into our receiver. We'll line our pinholes up. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we'll take our pin and clip. Now this cargo carrier doesn't come with a pin and clip, but you can find it on our website at eTrailer.com, part number PC3. All right, then we can take a few measurements. That looks like our nearest point is going to be from here to underneath of our bumper here, and that's right about three quarters of an inch. Overall, we've added about six and a half inches to our vehicle. And for our ground clearance, we're looking at about 14 and a half inches. Okay, we can go ahead and lower this down. Just come down here to this pin and clip and remove those. That allows us to fold it down. Now we'll replace those to lock it in place. And then we'll take a few more measurements. Our nearest point has changed to about six inches from here to our bumper. Overall, we've added about 26 inches to our vehicle. And for our ground clearance back here, about 17 inches. All right, so now we'll just open our rear hatch and we'll check our breakover point. That's going to be right about 15 inches before our rear hatch breaks over a carrier. So just want to be aware when we're stacking any materials about that high. All right, now one last thing I'd like to point out is that our exhaust exits on our driver and passenger side, and that's right about 12 inches away from our carrier. Just want to make a note of that when we're carrying any heat sensitive materials. That's going to complete our test fit of the Kurt Aluminum Folding Cargo Carrier, part number C18100 on our 2011 GMC Acadia. Let's see how that carrier did on our test course. This is our test course. Let's start with the slalom. This shows side-to-side -side action, such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering. Then onto our alternating speed bumps. This shows twisting action, such as hitting curbs, potholes, road debris, or uneven pavement. And last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway. 